At the edge of an ancient landscape, these waters have secrets in their depths. This crew is headed offshore. Their search is taking them below the waves. We're going to recover stuff with a GPS uh, and take photographs to help log our position. If you told me I'd be doing this work two years ago, I would have laughed in your face. 65,000 years ago, this seabed would have been part of the Australian landmass. It was drowned at the end of the last ice age, with global sea levels rising as glaciers melted. But remnants of ancient human civilization are still here, and they're being recorded for the first time. Since 2019, Dr John McCarthy has been leading the search. There's only ever been two submerged subtidal Aboriginal archaeological sites mapped in Australia. Uh, those were found by our team here. The traditional custodians of the peninsula call it Morajuga. So far, its surrounding waters have yielded a trove of stone tools dating back around 7,000 years. Well, not for scraping, might be for, for cutting. And because it's this material, I'd say it'd be skinning. Oh, yeah. Cutting the skin off a, off a hide or something, you know? Vince Adams is an Injibandi man, one of five language groups with connections to Morajuga and one of several local knowledge holders who help classify each tool. We've been practicing for years on land, this culture. Now it's underwater. Connection to country has been far more than what we thought. This year, the project set another first. Never before have local indigenous rangers done this kind of survey work. Yeah, we spent the last uh, year and a bit sort of training underwater. Just to, uh, first start off with pool dives and this big jump up to actually get out in the water. And... I've managed to work on my breath control so I can last a lot longer underwater now. Um, recently, I've been doing, well, while I was finishing my training, up to 70 to 80 minute dives, which is really impressive for me because usually it was about 55 to 60 minutes. Swimming beside the divers is a remote operated vehicle or ROV. It's basically a drone that goes underwater. It's on a tether so it's on a reel uh, and can go hundreds of meters distant uh, and deep. It's one of several pieces of gear helping survey areas the divers can't. Then we can attach various tools here. So this is how we can control it through the water. We need to capture large areas and assess them rapidly. So a lot of what we do in our university is we explore emerging and cutting edge technologies. Things like uh, bathymetric LIDAR, lasers from planes. Things like photogrammetry for 3D mapping of sites. Uh, we're using large ortho mosaics of the seabed to try and map out stone tools. The researchers hope that mapping these sites will be the key to protecting them. The Morajuga coast intersects with the Carnarvon Basin, home to the country's largest gas reserves. And Mr McCarthy says it is important any future pipelines or offshore platforms aren't built without knowing what they might be disturbing. Particularly in the context of climate change and offshore development, uh, you know, our future as a country here depends on being able to manage this heritage. The ROV is also allowing those on dry land to explore the seabed with live feeds of the ROV's camera into a virtual reality headset. Vince is able to identify tools in real time and feel like he's underwater while he does it. So you should see the stones underneath you. This is where we found uh, these tools in front of you. Yeah, you can see why. There's probably a lot more there. I mean, once we have traditional owners diving there with us. Well, that, this is exactly what this is for. I reckon. That trip was absolutely amazing and still able yeah, to talk about it you know, today. Knowing that they're on land and seeing this is just, man, I've, wow. you know, it's like 20 years ago when the mobile phone came out and they were all frightened of it. This headset, they were frightened of it. As soon as they got to see and what, was, what they were looking at, couldn't get them off it. You know? <laughs> the cultural significance of the project is not lost on Malik Chernside. 
One of the sites he's already explored was a freshwater spring thousands of years ago. It's referenced in a Nalama cultural song still practiced by his elders today. This is like a, you know, evidence and a connection to something that they've you know, talked about and sung about for such a long time. It's purpose and meaning, like, um, you get a sense of belonging to this whole landscape and people that were here before as well. A lot of people are really skeptical about um, the culture because we don't have anything really written down on paper. It's all passed down orally, as I've said, but to actually, you know, go out and explore these places where the stories originate from is really, really special. And after repeat dives, Caleb has come to appreciate the silent depths of the sea. Obviously, you don't really have a sense of gravity, so it sort of feels like you're in space, sort of, because you're just floating around. Yeah, it's a whole different world under the water. Being in solitude, very nice and peaceful. Three more dives to this once lost world are planned for later this year. The collected artefacts will be stored at the Morajuga Aboriginal Corporation.